rocking on a rocking chair. Okay. Hey guys, it's Anya. So today, that's right. Today is Thursday, and it's like about 10 o'clock p.m. right now, and I just got back from Mockingjay Part 1. Yas. And I went with my Girl Scout troop. It was actually pretty fun, except there were some moments whenever I was like, I'm like a crying mess. Since I found out that Mockingjay Part 1 would be coming out, I decided to reread Mockingjay. I have now read the Hunger Games series two times, and I know what I need to know. So... The movie was amazing, but the thing is that uh, what made it a bit bad is that where it would finish when PETA chokes Katniss, and then President Quinn gives this huge speech and like hijacks PETA. He keeps on like he strapped him himself. He's like, like the mostly the plot from King J Part One was to save the victors and PETA, but it did have some of like the hydroelectricity power shut down from District Five, the District Eight bombing, the District Thirteen bombing. And how Prim almost dies because she tried to get Buttercup from like 13 levels high. But one of the like most funniest moments was they did like some of the fake screening when Katniss wears up her flag and then goes like this and she has to do it over and over again. It's like bloopers or something. Or when the flashlight they hear she was Katniss was just throwing it all like all around and Buttercup was like chasing it, and the editing credits they also put in honor of Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yes, he did die. He played Plotark Heavensby, but he did get to film for Walking J Part 2 as well. So the plot for, for this one is mostly to rescue the victors and PETA, which leads to how PETA gets hijacked, and there are now people that are movie lovers, they're wondering, oh wait, what happens to PETA? What happens to everybody? But yeah, I already read it, so... But I think that Mockingjay Part 2 would be more emotional. Because for a few reasons. So, I'm not going to say anything about it right now. Just wait until next year. Actually, there was pretty good food at the movie theater as well. They did not serve just popcorn. They served a lot of good stuff there. And another thing. If you've been looking onto my Instagram, and I just posted this picture... If you want to see more of my feed and pictures and stuff, make sure to follow me. Or if you don't have an Instagram, that's fine. I'm just going to show you. It only has like a few likes right now, but a lot of comments. So, anyways. I, yeah, I don't get it, like really. I mean, how Box, wait, no, not Box. <laughs> what am I saying? Knox, or, yeah, the camera guy. I can't remember their names, really. I can only remember Cressidia, Captain Jackson, and so basically what, I, I don't get it, how, how can he whistle with a whistle? I don't understand. Oh, sorry about that. That makes totally sense now. Thanks, Leonie. And from that, it has, almost has the same review as Catching Fire, mostly, but a bit better because it became more precise to the book than it did in Catching Fire. But the, the thing is that I rate it like 4.9 stars out of 5. Because I kind of expected what to happen, but they actually, even though I knew what, what would happen, it still was kind of stressful for me because seeing PETA hijack just almost made me cry. Then him choking her, it's like, <laughs> stop it, stop, no, no. I almost had the same feeling if, if I only watched the movies, even though I've read the books. Anyways, if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. And if you don't subscribe and you're waiting for another movie review, stay tuned for Insurgent in March, The Scorch Trials in September, and then Walking J Part 2 later on. Next year. Bye!